Welcome to Aviviva. My name is Roxana and today we're going to start a new series which is going to be based on a book that I'm working on. Um, I've written several books and I've never published any of them but I think this is the first one I'm going to publish because it's kind of tongue-in-cheek but it really if anybody has half a brain they would actually pay attention to what I'm talking about and it is all business directed it is what I've experienced both as a customer, as an employee of several companies here and in Puerto Rico. And it's not just my opinion. I've seen this, I've seen several people talk about this. So I'm hoping that if anybody's watching that actually has the power to change the dynamics in big business in America, they will actually take the time to consult with people in a different way. And what I mean by that is, don't give people reviews, um, what do you call this? Uh, ask them to give you their opinion if you're not going to listen to them. Because it's annoying for me to receive in my email a four questions on a survey, or if I'm talking to you on the phone, I get four questions at the end of the call and you do absolutely nothing about it. It's stupid for you to ask me to waste my time that way. My time is as precious as yours. And this goes for customers and it also goes for employees. Because if you want me to be honest about how my manager manages my team and then you do absolutely nothing about it, I'm not going to waste my time. You pay him more than you pay me and yet you want me to waste my time, which is money, to give you a review that you're going to do nothing with. So today we're going to start with retail. And the reason why we're going to start with retail is because re the retail industry supposedly is dying. I don't think it's dying so much as it's transforming. But there is something to be said for not listening to your customers and your employees. And the reason why I say this is because the people that know your business better than anybody are your customers and the line level employees, the ones that actually deal with the customers. I had this um, manager once that got mad at me because we didn't have a particular product on the store. And I knew for a fact that the store that was across the street had it because I shopped at that store a lot too. And so I went ahead and told my customer to go to the other store to get it. Number one, they didn't have time to wait for me to send it and receive it on, in, on mail. They didn't have time to go to a, another one of our stores like 10 miles away because they needed it yesterday. So I became their problem solver. And what you have to understand when you own a retail store is that the relationship between your employees and your customers is golden if you know how to use it. If they trust your employees as knowledgeable people, they will come to you time and time again because, you know, when I had, I was in a jam, I went to Susie in housewares and Susie knew exactly what I needed, where to get it. She even told me what aisle in the other store I should go and get it and I got it. So the next time I needed something, the first place I went to was Susie. And if Susie had it, I would buy it from her. Believe me, it works. But if you don't let your employees do whatever they have to do for their customer, then you have a problem. Now, in my when I used to work retail, my theory was very simple. If the customer has time to wait for it, I'm going to call the other stores, check the computer if they have that ability in the computer system, order it online for them, have it delivered to their home, etc. If those are options, I'm definitely going to try those. But if a person has 10 people in their house because it's Christmas week, and their coffee maker just died, and we don't have the model they want, and I, and they can't drive somewhere else because one of those 10 people has their car, but they need the coffee maker yesterday, guess what I'm going to tell them? You know what? Store across the street has the model. In this aisle, you go into the store, you go to this place, you right there you're going to see the coffee maker. Okay? It's my job to know what other stores are selling, at the same time I'm selling it. I used to take my job very seriously, even though I got paid $10 an hour, okay? Because in my point of view is, if I know what I'm doing, people are going to trust me. Once they trust me, 
Yes, there are going to be times when I'm going to have to send them across the street, but nine times out of 10, they're going to come to me first. And then they're going to get something else. Why? Because they know that whatever I tell them is the truth and not just for me to make money. And that, my dears, is how you really make money in the retail industry. The reason why many stores are going under is because people consider reviews online to be trustworthy, which they're not, always. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. But they get the information immediately. They don't have to wait. Now, consider this for a second. You're home. Your coffee maker breaks down. You go online, and within five minutes, you know what stores around you have the item that you need. If you keep your inventory on check. If you don't have your inventory on check, it's going to lead to problems. And it happens. Every once in a while, it will say that you have one left and you don't have it left because maybe the one that you have is damaged or maybe it's a display and the person doesn't want the display. So yes, there are times when it, there's a legitimate reason for there to be a discrepancy. But more often than not, if the thing says you have 10 models, you should at least have one that you can sell. I mean, that's the way it works. So the person went online, checked all of their options. They decided to go to your store. And then they get to your store and you don't have the model. What do you do? Well, if you're a smart cookie, you will make sure that your customer ends up with whatever they need to get to get them through the day. Now, again, relationship between the actual customer and the actual line employee that sees them every single time they come shopping is sacred, period. Don't interfere. Don't make it harder on them. And don't try to add, oh, well, we can send it to you from such and such. Yeah, it's going to take seven days. My Christmas is next week. I need it now. It's funny how you as a person... Understand the logic that if the person went to the store, it's because they want it right now. If they really wanted to wait seven days, they would have ordered it already. But as a manager in a store, no, 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 you had to convince them otherwise. No, you don't. You really don't. So please, if you are a manager, a vice president, or anything else other than a line employee at a store, and you think you know more than that line employee about that store, you're sadly mistaken. You should listen to your employees. Second thing I'm going to tell you, stop transferring people from one department to the other if you're not going to give them the training. I'm going to give you a perfect example. You have a store. I'm not going to name the store. You have housewares on the second floor. You have clothing on the first floor. You have women's clothing on the first floor. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Have women's clothing in the first store because that's your highest seller. You have women's clothes, you have their, their shoes, and you have their makeup because you want to have everything for the woman so she can get everything. The jewelry, the makeup, the, 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 the shoes, and the dress for the outing. Okay? Perfect. You have it on the first floor. Then on the second floor, you might have housewares and manswear. Okay? Now, if stands to reason that the average person that works in women's clothes has no clue what's sold upstairs. You know why? Because unless they need a coffee maker, they don't spend hours upstairs looking at stuff. If you're not going to take the time to train your employees on each department, then you should not be transferring employees because somebody's late or somebody didn't show up or whatever. Okay? Why do I tell you this? There is nothing more annoying as an employee to go to work one morning thinking that you're going to work in housewares, which is where you've always worked, and that day Carla decided not to show up for work, and you decided that I'm going to replace Carla in the junior section, even though I have no idea. I don't have a child that shops in the junior section, so I have no idea what you're selling nor do I care. Don't be surprised if I spend most of my time in the cash register. Don't be surprised if half of your customers get upset because I have no idea what they're talking about either. That's a problem. 
we have this really bad habit of having stores short staff. And by that, I mean that the morning crew is one person per department or one person per register. If you have two registers in the same department. And what happens is somebody doesn't show up. They could be sick. They could be dead. They could be on vacation and you didn't plan for it because I don't know, for whatever reason, your manager didn't plan for it. And you decide to take somebody from a completely different department and send them to that department. Now, if juniors is right next to jewelry, chances are the people in jewelry know what's happening in juniors. If you want to transfer one person from that department to that department, it would make more sense because they kind of sort of have an idea and they see what's going on on the day to day. But don't take a person from shoes to housewares. Person from shoes doesn't have a clue what you sell in housewares. Unless they're a chef extraordinaire when they're home and they buy everything from you, they have no dang on clue what's going on. And that looks really sloppy to customers because your employees don't know what they're doing. Another thing that you people in management have the bad habit of doing is bringing people for Christmas season, but not training them really on what they sell, giving them a book and telling them, okay, you can find every answer you want on that book. They don't care. They're here to make as much money possible in as little time as possible because as soon as Christmas goes, they're gone. They don't care. They just want to be on the cash register for however many hours or whatever. If you are not taking the time to hire the right people for the job, at least make sure that the people that you're hiring have the right training. So those are my concerns with the retail industry. If you have any more to add, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.